Um, so good morning again. I will uh, quickly go through the uh, objectives of the CMA2 project, but we'll also do some context setting. Uh, due, to, due to time constraints, I will have to go quite fast, but I hope we can then keep on using this presentation as reference document throughout the meeting, just as the leaflet that has been uh, distributed earlier today. Um, so the CMA2 project is expected to contribute to two different partially overlapping development objectives or broader goals. And these are uh, the reduction of the vulnerability of Caribbean coastal ecosystems and associated human communities through improved integrated coastal zone management. And the second development objective is um, the sustainable management of shared living marine resources in the Caribbean and North Brazil shelf large marine ecosystems. And I think that immediately invites to indicate a bit what we exactly refer to with the Caribbean and North Brazil shelf large marine ecosystems. The geographic extent of these ecosystems is indicated in this map on this slide. Um, if we then move to the specific or to the main objective of the CMA2 project, how the CMA2 project is going to contribute to the overarching development objectives, it's going to do that through the sustainable operationalization of an online digital Caribbean marine atlas, technological platform, or set of platforms in support of the development objectives and to support policy development, decision making and the monitoring evaluation of governance processes. It will especially do that by focusing on the key issues of coastal hazards, climate change, biodiversity and habitats, fisheries and pollution with probably a special focus on land-based sources of pollution. Um, we can then split up this main objective in three specific objectives. The first one uh, to provide and operate a decision support mechanism for improved uh, integrated coastal zone management in up to 10 pilot countries. That was the initial aim. We will now need to revise through the meeting with how many countries we will work. Um, and we want to do that basing ourselves upon the state of the art in the existing technologies. The second specific objective then is very much the same, but this time focusing on the goal of improved sharing, shared living marine resources, governance and management, no longer at the country level, but with a rather regional view. So uh, for the large or adopting the large marine ecosystem concept. The third objective then, if we want to achieve the first two objectives, we will need to enhance the awareness the capacity and the participation of key stakeholders, both at the regional and at the national level. And very important, we need to focus not only on the capacity of data users to make use of the systems, but we need to specifically focus, uh, sorry, the data providers, we need to specifically focus on the users. When we're going to provide a system, when we're going to provide data, we need to make sure that these data address the needs of those that have to do the monitoring, those that have to do the policy setting and the decision making. Only that way can we assure long-term sustainability of the work we will be doing under CMA2, and only that way will we be able to then further upscale the results from the pilot work under CMA2. So I've been talking about decision making and I've been talking about stakeholders. What we propose as one of the important key reference frameworks for all the work to be done under the CMA2 project is the conceptual framework which is illustrated here, which is called the policy cycle or the decision-making cycle. So we see that data and information can support those that need to conduct advisory services to decision-makers. These decisions are then to be implemented. The results from the implementation are then to be reviewed and evaluated. Information again can be fed into the information system, which is then again used by the advisors to review and revise previous advice so that decision making can be further enhanced. When, under one of the sessions we will have in this workshop, we try to identify stakeholders, we should try to put names on each and any of these components for the different management issues that we want to address through 
the CMA2 decision support system. So very important. Let's look at this. Let's see who's in need of what kind of information, who has a mandate to do precisely what within the decision-making framework context so that we can clearly identify all stakeholders and establish the necessary collaborative arrangements with them. This is, of course, a major task, and CMA2 will only be capable of complying with part of the activities that need to be undertaken in this process. So it will be critical that we do not see CMA2 as a standalone project, but that we rather try to embed all activities under CMA2 with other ongoing initiatives, programs, projects in the region. One of the examples of such a project is, is the CLME Plus project. Uh, currently, the CLME Plus project is in the development phase, so the project proposal is being developed. There is a pre-commitment from the GEF for a financial contribution of $12.5 million to work at the level of the two large marine ecosystems I showed before. For what? To catalyze the implementation of a 10-year strategic action program for the sustainable management of shared <coughs> living marine resources. This action program to date has been endorsed by over 30 ministers in more than 20 countries and thus creates the political context for the work both under the CME Plus project but also under CMA2. This 10-year action program will focus on actions to deal with unsustainable fisheries, habitat degradation and pollution in a context of changing societal and climatic conditions. It is an umbrella program, which means that it, not, it is not meant to be implemented through a single project. Rather, we need to strive to bring together the different development partners, the different projects and initiatives in the region, so that they can all jointly contribute to the implementation of this very broad and very ambitious strategic action program. The CLME Plus project will help catalyzing the implementation of this action program, but clearly cannot do the job alone. So CLME Plus and CMA2 are already forging these collaborative arrangements, but we also invite all the other partners present here in the meeting to try to help us working out these collaborative arrangements so that we can jointly help implementing the SAP. For CM, CLME Plus and CMA2, it will be relatively easy in the sense that the timeline for the implementation of CLME Plus will run from hopefully early 2005 until 2015, sorry, until 2019, meaning that we have substantial overlap with the timeline for the CMA2 initiative as well. Then, very quickly, some key guiding principles and conceptual approaches. I will only talk about the driver pressure status impact response framework and the governance effectiveness assessment framework here. What we want to do with CMA2 is we want to help the region moving ecosystem conditions and societal benefits from their current status to the status that is desired by society. Today, we have negative impacts from a multitude of drivers, human activities, and the pressures they cause on the marine environment and associated living resources. This reflects, this, re, this results in a current status of ecosystems and fish stocks, which is not the optimal status that we would want. So, we will need to define responses. Responses to be implemented by governments, by civil society, and by the private sector. We need government, civil society, and private sector to work together to define these responses based on data and information. Data on the current status, targets with regard to the desired status, data on the magnitude and the type of the pressures so that we can adequately define our responses. So again, this is the second reference framework that we think is important that we take with us throughout all the activities we will be implementing in the context of CMA2. So we've talked about uh, governance processes. Interactive governance is the whole of interactions among civil, public, and private actors taken <coughs> to solve the societal problems that we have identified under the DIPSER framework. But as we talk about governance, we need to look at the broader context, which is reflected here 
in what we call the Governance Effectiveness Assessment Framework. In the end, we want to come to enhanced human well-being through socially just responses so that we can improve the conditions of ecosystems and associated fish stocks. In order to achieve this, we need to make, su we need to make sure we have governance arrangements in place. We have identified the institutions that will work on each and any of the components of the policy cycle. In the regional context, that means that we need to bring aboard those organizations that have a formal mandate for decision making or for advisory services in the context of the protection of the marine environment and in the context of the achievement of sustainable fisheries. That's why at this meeting we have representation here from, for example, UNEPSEP, indirectly from the CCID through uh, WWF who has a partnership with them, from FAO, OECS, CRFM and OSPESCA. Very important in this context will be as well that when we work on the biannual work plan and the timeline for the implementation, the fine-tuning of the timeline for implementation of CMA2, that we look at the timeline of the different governance processes in the region. For example, UNEPSEP has biannual work plans and biannual intergovernmental meetings. We would need to make sure that with CMA2 we can build as much as possible on the timeline of these regional organizations because that's where the higher level decision making will take place and that's through these mechanisms that we will be able to achieve uh, real sustainable impacts. So thanks very much for your attention and I hope we can indeed periodically come back to these reference materials as we try to find solutions for the different sessions under the meetings agenda. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Martin.